So who was Carl Selleck? He was my dad and, you know, he was my mentor. But he was also, you know, heavy into the automotive scene. Growing up, he was, <laughs> I would say, an outlaw, you could say. You know, always getting up to mischief. Always getting into tussles where he shouldn't have gotten the tussles with. I remember him telling me a story about him and his dad getting into a fist fight over dinner one day. And then at the end of it, he ended up going out west with nothing more than 20 bucks and a pork chop to his name. But you know, you can only go out west so far before you hit a dead end. His dead end was down in Alberta, the land of the free, basically in Canada. There he did every known trade job known to man. Enjoyed a couple years down there, living the outlaw life, cowboy hats and all. And then he eventually came back here, basically the province of New Brunswick. So why is there a Trans Am behind me? My dad fell in love with this style of car back around when Smoking and the Bandit came out. You know, Bandit 1, Bandit 2, Burt Reynolds, having a good old time. So <laughs> Trans Am kind of rubbed off on my dad. And he was always about horsepower and pushing them to their limits. The exact car that my dad had when he met my mother was like a 72, 73 Trans Am. And funny story, the only reason they met is because he took that car with a blown up engine to my grandfather's garage. And you know, that's where I met my mom. Kind of neat, eh? The Trans Am represents muscle, outlaw, that kind of stuff. You know, Smokey and the Bandit. And it summarized my dad very, very well. My father and my mentor always made sure we knew the definition of hard work. Growing up, we always burned our own wood, cut it on our own land, trucked it out ourselves, ranked it up. My dad was a tile setter and cement finisher by trade. Two very hard jobs, especially cement finisher. He would do backsplashes for tile, tile floors, anything that you could put the rock on the sheet on, he could do it. And he was fast and he was good. He was a man of his skill and a man of his trade. And he was proud to be just that. If there were three words to describe my father, one of them would be loyalty. He was loyal all the way and you could trust him with anything you ever needed. Another word to describe my father would have been tough. He was part of the generation where manliness was not an attribute, manliness was a way of life. So, black Trans Ams, big engines, working day and night, busted knuckles, providing for your family, working with your hands, building what you have, being proud of what you've done. Those were the virtues that my dad lived by. Out of many words, there's many other words I could describe my dad, but the last one I'm gonna choose is friendly. He was a man that even though he was super tough and he had a hard outer shell, he would give the shirt off his back to a stranger on the street. No one was a stranger to my dad is the best way my mom could put it. He would leave an unforgettable impression on everyone he talked to. He had the character that is larger than life and he had the charisma and the attitude and the attributes to back that up. Now I might get the dates a little bit fuzzy, but about five years ago, my dad was diagnosed with lung, heart, and brain cancer. It's uh, not good. Basically a terminal illness, the doctors gave him two to three months to live at the time without treatment. So, like every other family, we opted for radiological treatment to the head and chemo. Chemotherapy, that's what's offered in Canada for that type of way. Unlike some other families who, as soon as the diagnosis is done, there's very little to be done. And you just kind of have to come to terms with that, I guess. But we were very lucky and very fortunate. My dad had a specific gene in his cancer that there was a basically a test treatment going on in our country that my dad could partake in lab study, basically, that helped fight off his brain, lung, and spinal cancer. I still remember the day that he got the diagnosis. 
<laughs> Again, all throughout my life, my dad instilled strength and being a man, being a manly man, you don't let your emotions show. I remember on the day when he got his diagnosis, I cried like a baby beside the side of the shed. And <laughs> my dad must have knew what was going on. And he came to the side of the shed and he told me there that it would, it would be all right. And that he wasn't going anywhere. One of the things that are hard to come to terms with in this scenario was growing strong from a young boy into a young man. But watching my strong father grow weaker year by year, day by day. Cancer is a hell of a thing, guys. It, it, it really is. So my dad loved these Trans Ams to pieces, and this is his Trans Am right here. This one he had built when I was little. We would go to car shows in it. We would do a whole bunch of events in it. We were a family unit, basically, in the back of this car. And again, this car represented my dad very well. We used to, you know, <laughs> make a joke that instead of an eagle, it should have been his face with his big handlebar mustache draping across the fender. That would have been pretty funny. So this car sadly sat for a little bit in the last couple of years, basically ever since he got sick. The last year that just happened, I decided one of the reasons I'm going to do this is let's take him out for Father's Day. Let's take my dad for the drive in his car where he no longer could do it himself. And just cheer him up. Make his day. We ended up working tirelessly on this car. On the engine, on the suspension, on the tires, on the brakes. Everything had to basically be redone. But it was a very important thing. And money and time were basically no object. I worked round the clock on this fella. But sadly, before I could take my dad out in the car that he built. And now the car that I built. My dad was bedridden, and he died at the age of 63 years old. My dad was a man of great qualities, and as I said, he had great virtue and valor. And he wanted simplistic things, and he wanted them done right. One of his last requests were to go in his own home with his own family and his own pets in a familiar place. Not in a hospital, not in a nursing home, none of that. My dad lived to be 63 years old on this earth, and he was a tough son of a bitch all the way down. <laughs> to live and breathe the strong, tough man, basically to the end, and stay with his family unit. And that's what we ended up doing. And that's a tough pill to swallow. Strength-wise for me, strength-wise for my family, and strength cries for my dad, but we did it for him, and I hope he is proud. We love you, Dad. Every single day we miss you more and more, but I hope that I can be the man that you once were someday and grow into the very, very big shoes you left to fill. <laughs> Stripe was white, it was 18 feet from the bow of the stern line. Second hand from a dealer in Atlanta, I rode up with daddy when he went there to get her. Put on a shine, put on a motor, built out of love, made for the water. Ran her for years till her transom got rotten. A piece of my childhood that'll never be forgotten, it was. Just an old plywood boat with 75 Johnson that 
electric choke A young boy, two hands on the wheel I can't replace the way it made me feel And I would turn and shot my Make it wine, he'd say You can't beat the way an old wood boat rides Just a little lake across the Alabama line But I was king of the ocean When daddy let me drive Just an old half-ton short bed Ford My uncle bought new in 64 Daddy got it right Cause the engine was smoking A couple of burnt valves And he had it going He let me drive her And we'd haul off a load Down a dirt strip Where we'd dump trash Off a thick tin road I'd sit up in the seat And stretch my feet out To the pedals Smiling like a hero That just received his medal It was just an old Hand-me-down Ford With three speed on the column And a dent in the door Young boy, two hands on the wheel I can't replace the way it made me feel And I would press that clutch and I'd keep it right He'd say, a little sore son, you're doing just fine Just a dirt road with trash on each side But I was Mario Andretti When daddy let me drive Grown up now, three daughters of mom. I let them drive my old Jeep across the pasture at our home. Maybe one day they'll reach back in their file and pull out that old memory and think of me and smile and say, It's just an old worn out Jeep, rusty old floorboards, hot on my feet. A young girl, two hands on the wheel. I can't replace the way it made me feel and he'd say Turn it left and steer it right Straighten up girl, now you're doing just fine Just a little valley by the river where we ride But I was high on a mountain When daddy let me drive When daddy let me drive Oh, he let me Just an old plywood boat with a 75 Johnson with electric choke. Early morning, there's a message on my phone. It's my mother saying, darling, please come home I fear the worst But how could you leave us all behind? There's so much to say, but there's so little time So how do I say goodbye? Someone who's been with me for my whole damn life You gave me my I couldn't You always saw the best in me Right or wrong, you were always on my side But I'm scared Of what life without you's like And I saw the way she looked into your eyes And I promise if you go I will make sure she's alright so how do I say goodbye? Someone who's been with me for my whole damn life You gave me my name and the color of your eyes I see your face when I look at mine So how do I, how do I, how do I say goodbye? And there's no way you could ever let me down 
Gonna steal some time and start again You'll always be my closest friend And someday we're gonna make it out Just hold the light Just hold the light high, high So how do I say goodbye To someone who's been with me for my whole day He called her on the road From a lonely cold hotel room Just to hear her say I love you one more time And when he heard the sound Of the kids laughing in the background He had to wipe away a tear from his eye Little voice came on the phone He said, Daddy, when you come home He said the first thing that came to his mind I'm already there Take a look around I'm the sunshine in your hair I'm the shadow on the ground I'm the whisper in the wind I'm your imaginary friend And I know I'm in your prayers Oh, I'm already there She got back on the phone Said I really miss you, darling Don't worry about Kids, they'll be all right. Wish I was in your arms, lying right there beside you. But I know that I'll be in your dreams tonight. And I'll gently kiss your lips, touch you with my fingertips. So turn out the light. I'm the shadow on the ground I'm the wind 